looking forward to this conversation for a few days, but the intensity is really high given how much we love Pika and the world is talking about this application right now, this AI tool. And I'm here with, I would say, a founding creative director. His name is Matan cohen Grumi. Welcome, Matan. It's so good to have you here. Hey, Faye. How are you? Doing really well. I complimented on your hairstyle and you're currently at the Bay Area and yeah, welcome. And for the past two months, I feel like you have seen some tremendous progress for Pika. So we really look forward to hearing all about that. And for people who are not as familiar with your work, I'm just going to do a brief introduction and we'll dive into today's questions. Okay, so it looks like Matan was an ex-rock star who played in a rock metal band called, I'm going to try my best, Bezephyr, and that was signed to a major label in 2004. So he's been in advertising industry for the past 20 years. That's something that I also, we have shared interests and experiences. And for the past 10 years, he was a TV commercial director for international brands such as Adidas, PNG, Sabin, or Sabon, <laughs> Columbia. Yeah, right. Which is the right way? It's sabon. Sabon. Oh, I so guess it means right. like so in the Hebrew. Oh, so boom. Perfect. And I, you also own a TVC production company and became one of the 10 largest production companies in Israel. Around last August, you got into AI video. So not too long ago and got started with a lot of media attention with your AI video commercials. And two months ago, you officially started your new and exciting role as the founding creative director at Pika. And for those people who haven't tried out Pika yet, it is at Pika.com. Art. And if you want to learn more about Matan, his website is matancohengroomy.com. I'm going to list some descriptions and including some of the resources as well. Yeah, welcome. I was so shocked to see your experience as a ex rock star. I don't know what instrument you played or why your band is named that way. What's the connection here? Oh, so it's, I play guitars for as far as I can remember myself, which is out of like 30 years. Yeah. That's my and guitar right there. <laughs> so we started this high school band, and is this just Kind of threw us off to this amazing roller coaster where we signed some record deals. We, we started touring, playing with our favorite bands. And it was pretty hard maintaining a career playing in an Israeli rock band. Wow. So each one of us just also got like this side career in the beginning. I went into advertising. I started from the pretty much from the bottom as a graphic designer. But quickly, I became a freelance and started doing art direction, creative directing. And eventually I left the industry as a, as a, as an art director and started my own thing as a TV commercial director. So wow. along the way, I learned a lot about cinema, about editing, all aspects of how to make a video. So this was my route for 20 years, like mm -hmm. slowly learning everything about like how to make an ad, how to make videos. And I think all of this experience in all those different aspects of advertising and editing and directing really helped me, helped me being a pretty good AI creator because a creating video with AI is all about doing it yourself. Right now, about four months, four months ago, my, my band, which, which was just celebrating like 25 years, we decided to like call it quits and, and just do this one last show in Tel Aviv, which was amazing. And also record this one last song. So we recorded that one last song and we needed to have a video, music video for it. We didn't want to go into production because we didn't have a lot of time and we didn't have budget because we're a male band from Israel. Someone just said, Hey, maybe we'll do the, one of those AI videos. And I was like, yeah, really? And then I kind of, uh, I was by that time I was already like following AI closely, like uh, from the sidelines, I, like I was playing with Mid Journey when it came out. I was, I tried it for the first time when it just came out, like the concept blew my mind. You just type something and you can visualize it in a second. And it, that really blew my mind. But when I played around with it, it like I, the results were creepy. That's the first version of Mid Journey, like a year and a half ago. It was creepy and the concept was amazing, but the result wasn't just so good. So I put it to the side. And then a year later, when one of my bandmates said, maybe we should do one of those, I went online just to see what's up. And, uh, and I saw this amazing AI video, like this trailer, a sci-fi trailer, which now there's millions of them, but there was this, I think it was one of the first one. I watched it and I was like, oh, wow, this came a long way. So I right dived into it. So my first AI project was doing a three minute 
uh, AI video with this cinematic look, some, something kind of Hollywoodish, but not exactly. And let me first let me say that never do a three minute video as your first project. That was so hard. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it got me really excited. Like uh, I was really excited about the way that creating like this because everything. I say it, I said it was a lot of work, but when you put it in comparison to what it would take before we had this ability and this technology, like this is nothing. And just playing around with it, just generating more clips, more images that you then turn to clips. That this whole process was so new and exciting for me. And a year ago, I was pretty much I stopped editing a few years back because I was just doing directing. But this kind of got me back the passion to editing again. And I just, I just love this process and just being this one man show, we can do everything just from thinking of a vague concept and then really fast, just trying it out, editing it, seeing how it feels like. So I, I fell in love, I fell in love with the process again after a long time that I didn't do ad, like video editing at all. And that video did well. Like I, I was pretty new on Twitter. Like I had 12 followers. I just got on Twitter out there and it got some attention. And when I saw how people react to that. I said, maybe I should do another one. And maybe the next one shouldn't be this dark, like, well, video with music that it's not that easy to digest for everyone. Maybe do the exact opposite. Barbie was pretty much on everyone's mind back at the time. So I did this very bright, funny, hip hop cats video, which got more attention. And what were you using, by the way? Sorry to interrupt that. You're giving so much information. What tools do you remember you were using at the time before Sorry. Pika was born? Yeah. In the beginning, when I just started out, I always used Midjourney and then mm -hmm. I used Pika Labs and mm -hmm. some Runway. When I was starting to create, I was using both, but I it gradually transformed only using Pika. I really liked it. I had the uh, instant connection to mm -hmm. what they were doing. It's, I think for me, the thing that really got me connected to that is I always felt that the clips had some life to it. Like they were breathing, they were alive. They weren't just like very pl aesthetically pleasing. They had this soul. So I always felt like the characters had, had some life to it. And that's got me like using Pika exclusively. And that's also what got me falling in love with their product. Because I always say that when you do videos, the way I try to approach it is when I see like a shot or a take or a clip or whatever, I try to just look at it and understand how does this makes me feel? Mm -hmm. Like, is this making me feel sad? Is this making me feel happy, excited? As long as I'm feeling something, I know that it's good and it's core. And then I look at everything else, like also aesthetics, the composition, if it's, if it's the, if it's aesthetically pleasing, I try to look at this in a whole, but the core of it is always like, how does this make me feel? That's really interesting. I think your connection when it comes to music, your musical background and rock band and in an advertising design, I feel like this is the perfect role for you because it's bringing everything together. I have been, there are many musicians in my life. My mom's sisters are all musicians playing for the Beijing Orchestra and all that. So I, I feel like even though I only play casually, there is that sense of belonging. There's a sense of connection. And I've learned that there's nothing more you can learn by putting on YouTube is one thing, but to perform live is a completely yeah. different experience. So I was thinking about your live performances as well and how that connects to creating a real very, uh, 360 experience for people involved. That's what's echoing my head. Yeah, I can totally understand that because it's art, right? Performing mm -hmm. arts is also like an expansion of arts. And I think, uh, I think uh, it's... It, once you have this artistic passion, then it can manifest in itself in many ways. And it can be music, it can be videos, it can be advertising. And for me, I rediscovered that passion in AI. And yeah. so I talk about it like this was years ago, but when I think about it, it was like four months ago, it blows my mind because I <laughs> so much has happened back since then. It's crazy. People who are, if you, anybody search for Pika right now during the release of, I'm sure even months after we released the episode, it is so groundbreaking, right? This is something Pika made people just stop and really pause what they're doing in that given moment to say, I have to check it out. It's especially true for content creators like myself, who's constantly publishing on YouTube, engaging with people on LinkedIn, 
And I'm also teaching people all about AI, particularly through generative AI or MarTech or marketing tech. So meeting you and discovering Pika, it's really been the highlight of my week and to be sitting here with you to hear that firsthand. So I'm really curious. A lot of people may be wondering, I'm only a designer. I'm a creative director. I don't really see a career path to really connect to technology. Do I have to be a data scientist? Do I have to be a prompt engineer, right? Now you are the living example of someone coming from a music and an art background who is so deeply involved and contributing significantly to AI. So could you maybe talk about how you were discovered and by the founders and or how did you find your way to becoming a founding creative director? Yeah, it's right where we stop, right? So I started doing those videos. And for me, as a, as an, as a creator, I was always looking to see kind of what hasn't been done yet. And I think this is, for me, one of the most exciting times because being in advertising for so long and having the, indus the, the advertising industry just doing so much things for the past um, decade, it's hard to be original because there are so many talented people and the field is just, everything is, there's a mass amount of commercials that being like, you know how it is, right? like media, how do you create something new? You get inspired by something and then you create something new. We've been doing it for the same way for a long time. So Very there's true. a lot of it. And AI is like uncharted territory because mm -hmm. everything is new right now. So someone did a sci-fi trailer and then everyone's doing the sci-fi trailer. And so when I tried to approach it, I, saw, I thought, oh, wow, this is such an amazing opportunity because not a lot has been done yet. So before I approached any kind of, okay, so I was thinking, what is my next, what is, what, what is the next video I want to do? I did a dark metal video. I did a pink cats video. What's yeah. next? So yeah. what's next? I thought, wouldn't it be cool to try and make like a food commercial with this really food appealing, something that's supposed to make you feel like I want to taste this, yeah. but it wasn't even filmed. It's created by a computer. So I did this burger commercial and it also got a lot of attention. And this was like my, my method of just how to stand out in that space, this new space that had all those opportunities. That's the way I saw it. So I kept doing those, like keeping this in mind, like what hasn't been done yet. And I'm, my Twitter account just grew from 12 followers to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And I was actually approached by, uh, by some of the guys at Pika. And I was such a big fan at the time. I was like, oh yeah, let's <laughs> talk. And I started just doing the videos for Pika at first, like to just because I was doing videos anyway. Okay, what haven't I done yet? I haven't done a video for Pika. Let's do that. Yeah. And we just got a good connection. We just started talking. And yeah, I, I got the offer. I was super excited to join the team. And, and this is a very exciting time for me right now. Congrats. Oh, no, this I'm is fantastic. You're basically like a content creator turned creative director. Clearly, you've had extensive experience working in advertising in the creative field that this is not to mistaken by somebody who just decided to become a YouTuber like yesterday. And there's a long trajectory, all that yeah. work that you put in. Yeah, because I've been a creative director, but not in this field. I've been a creative director in the advertising agents industry. Mm -hmm. I also in my own company doing commercials. So there I was acting mostly as a creative director. So I feel like this, this is the perfect role for me. And I, all, I always had a passion for like technology. I, I wasn't working in tech, never. Like I, back when I was really young, when I was 18, I started, go, I went to the university for a while to, to learn computer science, but I left it at a very early stage. Mm -hmm. So I got back to this right now, like 23 years later, and just feel so, so honored to be with, with those team of extremely talented people and so smart and just handling the artistic side of it. It's just, it's been so much fun. It's hard work, but it's so much fun. And I really think I found my place right now. This oh. is what, this is the perfect place for me right now. Well, I gotta say it warms my heart to hear that. It's crazy because I think about our overlapping interests, even though we come from very different places, but you mentioned computer science. So I studied computer science and math in college, undergrad. I really wanted to leave because the way it was taught wasn't so pleasant to be part of. I think we're, what did you like about it? What did I like or didn't I like about it? What, what didn't you like about it? Ooh, so I think we're very similar in age. So I went to college 2001 and I graduated 2006 because we had this co-op program. And at that time, and it's still partially for the next four or five years, programming tests and learnings happen on paper. So yes, you have these assignments. We have programming assignments, but 
there are oftentimes there are like in classroom tests that were written on paper. And this is, I think our professors are very talented. However, the way that they're explaining some of these problems that I found completely irrelevant from real life, unlike precisely what you described, like it did not connect with me emotionally. I didn't know any of the problems had any value to being solved. And also I found the assignments to be completely unclear. A quick tangent, because I was really, I feel like I was really suffering and I wanted to study business and this and that. But I was thinking like for my family, I want to graduate and, and get a job, which I did in consulting and advertising because of my degree, I just stuck with it. And I was thinking one day that knowledge is going to come in handy, which it has been for the AI strategy development, all the work I'm doing today. So I don't regret it. <laughs> I can totally relate to so many of the other things you just said. Yeah, I felt the same. Like, why am I learning all of this? For me, it was the math because I mm. loved computers. I always loved computers, but like four out of five of the courses were like math. algebra, linear math, all that stuff. Calculus, like, five. Yeah, yeah, I was double I was major like, as a result. And I was good at math, but I was like, this is not what I am here for. I just want to mm. learn the, the geeky stuff. So, yeah. Uh, but this is so funny. I got to say, for anybody who's listening to this, one studied or pursued a degree and really struggled. At the time, there's a gentleman named Kurupa, so K-I-R-U-P-A. He was like such a hero of my, I didn't realize he was just a kid, like a teenager when I was reading his website. He's one of the first flash guys and he ended up going to MIT to study computer science. So even though we never knew each other back then, I remember like, I wish I could meet Kurupa who must be having a wonderful time at MIT and understand everything about computer science. And then d literally months ago, he reached out to me and I said, Faye, I really like your content. Let's have a chat. I was totally giggling out of control and finding out very quickly that he also struggled studying computer science at MIT. And I realized all that time we feel alone that we're really not. And not to loop back to Pika, I think what's going on with the AI world in particular with Pika, this is what gets me excited is that for people we're still like, wait, what's Pika? It's going from idea to video, from text to video without you yeah. having to do the learning math, video editing, how to, how to upload all these things, how to manage the team, which small business owners don't have the time to do that. So I think Pika really leveled the playing field. Like yes. without, like you need an idea, but you need to have a better idea. You need to have more meaningful prompts. And, but it's like, people are so excited to realize, okay, the saying of I'm not creative. Now anybody can be creative. So that's, yeah, that's how I feel. Yes. I think this is like the most exciting thing that's happening right now, like mm -hmm. for me and for a lot of us, so a lot of the people that are into it and a lot of people that are just discovering it for the first time. So I think Pika opened that door for so many people who, cause it wasn't accessible, that accessible up until now. And we, I guess by now, by the time this is aired, like it's already public and mm -hmm. Just, it's so easy to work it with the new web UI that we have. So everyone basically can just come on, come to the site, just mm -hmm. think of an idea, type it in the most like common language that you can, that you can talk at and, uh, and it will visualize it for you. So like, this was the Pika mission statement, right? It was like mm -hmm. to put, to give people like everyone, not just professionals, also professionals, but every, everyone just give that power in their hands to just. Now think of an idea and have it visualized so mm -hmm. everyone can do, can create those visual visuals right now. And I think that's such a strong mission statement and such a strong tool and I'm really proud just to be a part of this. Yeah. It's so interesting. So I want to give people a flavor of what they can potentially create. I've had the pleasure of testing things out. So I was initially playing on discord. I know that it may not be everybody's cup of tea. So. There is currently a wait list. Do you know, you don't have to commit to this, obviously, like around what time would it be a public application where people can interact through a web browser? It's like, we, what do you mean? Like a mobile or? A mobile or desktop experience. I know there's a, a wait list right now. So, yeah, so the wait list is exactly for that. Yeah. Uh, we're, we started giving access like to, to a small group of uh, super collaborators. These people mm -hmm. were like our supporters and part of our community and has been supporting us for so long and they we're testing everything out just before we release it like publicly, publicly, yeah. and we will gradually open this. So it's like very soon. We, I think every day we're opening the circle, the circle a little bit wider yeah. just to make sure that everything is really perfect once it's public. And yeah, so I don't have an exact answer for that, but it's like very soon. And I've been asked that a lot. So I'm just, I just want to say it's 
right around the corner. This is yeah. the best answer I can give. And for people who are watching this, listening to this, if you want to check it out, you can go to Pika, I-K-A dot art to sign up for the wait list. And you can immediately test things out using Discord. I'm not an expert in Discord, but I wrote an article, which I'm going to link in the description below for you to check out exactly how to use very simple prompts to test with imageries, with just a prompt, just an idea to generate videos. So Matan, I was thinking about my next question is I realized when I test things out, I totally get that short form videos, right? Like having an idea, have something animated. I don't know exactly how long, five, 10, 15 seconds is the way to go right now. What is your vision or what is the next step? If somebody wants to design like an episode of animation where like a slightly longer storyboard, how can we possibly use Pika like in the future to achieve that? I, th I think right now what all the, what, what we're doing right now is basically you make clips, right? So right now we're making three second clip that you can extend on the website to make them longer and make them even a lot longer. But the thing is when you want a, a clip can tell just a little part of the story. So you need to have all those clips and then stitch them together to, to make an idea to, to, uh, sorry. Yeah. So I think in the future. Like right now we're building the foundations. So we're just making sure those clips are the best that, that you can have, that they will, will communicate exactly what your idea was and just to make them like really look amazing. But I think in the future, it's, it, I think it's just a natural progression of things. I think all of those, all of this industry, like, I guess right now it's just those short clips. You have to edit them to, together. Just when I think about it personally, like what could be nice is if I try to imagine where it will go, it's like you, you just write an idea and it manifests itself. So I don't know how far that in the future is, but you just think of a, of an idea and it doesn't make this one clip. It just make the whole thing. Interesting. We're guessing... asking you questions and continue to build our stories on someone. I we're ideating right now, obviously that yeah, this like, idea, this platform, so many legs. Yeah. The way this technology is going is just so fast. So you, mm -hmm. you can't really tell like when this will happen, but, but yeah, I, I guess this is maybe the next stage. Maybe this is the next stage. Yeah. Wonderful. So I, when it comes to des designs and AI platforms and tools, I've had the pleasure and the privilege to interact and talk to so many different companies and growth marketers and designers. What are some of the things you think Pika really stands out from the crowd? from its competition, from what we have seen so far? I, so I think it's, there's a few things. First of all, like I, I said this before, like for me personally, I always felt like the clips are alive. So they convey some kind of feeling and the characters, they breathe. And that's what got me falling in love with everything that they're doing, like with the results. And that's the first thing. And I think that's the second thing that the most important one is the, the goal. Like the goal of the, of Pika is to give that power to everyone. So ev ev everyday users, people that have m maybe have a zero experience with video editing, just giving that power of, cause a lot, like everyone is a storyteller, right? Everyone has an idea. Everyone can think of a cool thing to, that he would like to manifest as a video, but a lot of them doesn't have the right tools, the right experience. Video production is, was very pricey, expensive. So if you wanted to. To make a video, you would either add to make a, some kind of production or to go shoot it with an, or if you went to animations, that's also very lengthy and pricey process. So what Pika is doing is democratizing that and making everyone, giving everyone the ability to visualize their ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think this is so strong and it's just exciting. I think it's very exciting. Yeah. And I think a lot, if I have to just look around, I think a lot of people maybe I feel this is what separates us, those two things. So clips are very alive, I have a lot of feelings. And second is just the mission goal and this to appeal to everyone and not just, mm -hmm. not just the AI enthusiasts, mm -hmm. not just the professionals, but really to everyone. So everyone who has an idea or everyone who, is, who wants to create a video, basically everyone. I think that separates us. Yeah, that's super cool. And I can imagine like people started to really experiment and didn't even think that one of our ideas is even interesting, but now they can visualize it. It may help them change their mind. I also think as a creator for us to ideate, break the ice is really hard sometimes. So with Pika, it just makes that process easier, more interactive. Like you will feel like you have these partners, not one person, but like a team of people to help you put this together. And just incredible because I think we grew up with 
I would say Pixar, Disney, and whenever at the end of the credit for each one of those films, we all know it costs like multiple hundreds of millions of dollars. And you can see all the credits, hundreds and thousands of people working on it. Now you feel like you have a, you share a slice of that pie that you can visualize your idea. But I do want to pivot a little bit to the fact that professionals and companies and agencies truly can use it too and make money. So as part of our audience, people are watching this, people are thinking about like monetization and small business ideas or big or medium and enterprise business ideas. I, first of all, recommend people follow me on LinkedIn because you have a lot of updates, like daily updates, and that are so relevant to the world that we're talking about. And I saw one of the videos probably published a month ago where I believe like pink roses, petals like flowers, and you explain the power of Pika. And in the end, at the end of that video, you shared a split screen of the original video shot with the 6K camera, expensive crew versus the right one, 100% generated by Pika. And frankly, I was blown away. I was sharing with my family and friends that are like, they don't know which one to pick, which is better. And then it, the idea is a split, right? Like some people say, okay, the original I can see, but some people say, I actually like the AI version even better. Yeah, could, It's crazy. So could you maybe talk about like how companies can think about using Pika to create commercials, their storytelling, their client work? Let's explore. Uh, basically, the reason I did this comparison is just to show like how much of the original world can stay exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So the same editing, same concept, same visual world, same sound effects, same titles, just the footage replaced. Mm -hmm. And the footage is the thing that takes m m the most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it, the, to produce that footage, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of preparation, a lot of like making a bank of shots in one shooting day and then picking just the best one. So it's a very lengthy process, very expensive process. But at the same time, that video wouldn't be the new one, the AI, wouldn't be impressive without all the skill and expertise that went into it. Because it's not just generating a clip, it's also what you do, we do with it. So I think the process, what I wanted to demonstrate is the process stays the same, but instead of going out for a shoot, you can maybe start, also, you can maybe just visualize it using Pika. And this is so strong because like when you put them side to side, like you said, they're very similar, but the, the, the process just got so much shorter and, and so much less expensive. Like the gaps are, it's hard to perceive. Yeah, it's hard to even imagine. So what is the process like we're talking about in the future when people are truly using Pika to create these lengthier or like more commercial like production quality output. So I'm thinking, given my limited experience producing one docuseries on Amazon, is I, I was the producer, executive producer, so I witnessed the process, but I had a team to support me. So I remember we're running around like having these shot lists. And so is that also like how you created that commercial? You still have the detailed shot list, the exactly the idea, what is being shared? Like what, what how did you, uh, how were you able to replicate that? If you notice, when you put them side to side, they're like, the everything is the same. Mm -hmm. except the underlying shot. So yeah. I actually took the old one, put it like, if you like, if you know a little bit of editing, put yeah. it on the timeline yeah. and then started replacing those shots one by one. Oh. So if in, the in the first shot, mm -hmm. if I had, I would look at it and I would say, okay, this is a very extreme close up mm -hmm. of a damask rose, probably being shot with a mac with a macro lens. So it's a macro shot. Mm -hmm. And okay. maybe we had a doll, a slow doll in. I just reverse engineer it. So yeah. I saw, I looked at it. I saw, okay, this shot is, let's write it down. Write it, press <laughs> generate. I get the shot back. And maybe that's not the perfect shot. So maybe I have to re refine it a little bit. So I refine it and I get it back. Still so much easier, so much faster than going and doing it the way that it was originally done. Because mm -hmm. originally it was a very lengthy process of just picking the right flower and making sure everything is perfect. And a very expensive studio, very expensive camera equipment. Shooting takes a lot of time, like a lot of time. Then going yeah. back to the editing room and picking just that one second out of a, out of the, a day of shooting. Yeah. So everything is more efficient. Every, everything is shorter. Everything is like uh, also, I think, very exciting. Yeah. It's so funny that a lot of us who are using, even though I edit a lot in Final Cut Pro mostly, and I look at like short form content, I play with AI. But one thing I realized, especially within the Discord community, is I learn from other people's prompts, which is really interesting that I know personally, I never really used 
to describe things like this is imagine this is shot on the camera with this like ISO and then with this lens. I'm like, whoa, I don't even have this vocabulary and training to like to get down that level. But you just mentioned it very casually. So that's something that I feel like I want to write a post about. These are the things that you can example what it looks like. And that gives people just incredible leverage to create something so, so unique with Pika. Yes, I think, but mm -hmm. uh, also the way that you, if we really want to make it available for everyone, I think what, uh, part of what we will do is what we're doing is not, you don't have to speak that high language. You just write what you want to see and the AI will rewrite it so you can, uh, mm -hmm. you, get, you will always get a professional result. No, you don't have to be a professional to get a professional result. Love it. Love it. And same thing. I totally agree. I've been training and doing a lot of webinars on AI and I was really surprised. A lot of people are still very new to AI. We're like the only thing they if barely interacted with is ChatGPT that just blows my mind. I was like, what? You haven't tried out 30 different tools and fun love with half of them. And one thing I realized also since in the past year, ChatGPT has made it really easy for people not have to write these perfect prompts. But you yes. can even feed in articles to say, this is how I write. And it's, okay, I just study how, how you write. And now could you write another article that sounds like me? So I feel like Pika is definitely going to make it really prime for people to be able to create professional footage without speaking the nerdy language. So, this is exactly what we want to achieve. <laughs> like, we don't want you to have to be a professional or speak this professional language. We want our, our product to just <laughs> understand what you want, even if you give a very simple, a simple prompt and still deliver the most professional result that you can have. So mm -hmm. this is when we were talking earlier, like about what this is, what, is, what do we want this to be? We want this to always deliver professional results, but not just for professionals, so just basically for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is super cool. So to summarize, I know that I derailed it a little bit. There's so many different use cases. You can use it for personal projects. You can use it for your personal YouTube channel. I can think about quick three, five seconds intro, outro that's going to look uniquely you and very captivating, very candy-like if you want it to be. But as well as commercials, which you have given a great example of somebody be curious enough to say, this is the original footage, this is what, the finished product, and now we're going to recreate it using Pika. So those are like two main use cases I can think of right off the bat. And what are some of the other things you're excited to see people experiment it with? Well, uh, we released two features that currently are really mind blowing. Like I've been playing them I'm playing around with them for a month. And <laughs> every time I keep using it, I, my mind is blown. And the first one is called expand canvas. And basically what that does, you can take a video and then have the, have the AI visualize what's what it will look like if you take, want to make it bigger, not yeah. bigger in size, if you want to expand your canvas. So yes. the AI kind of visualize everything that's, that's not in the frame. That's pretty mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. So let's say the frame that we are seeing right now, right? It's like this close-up medium shot of me and you. Yeah. So if I took this recording of the podcast and run it through our system, we'll maybe feel that painting on top of your, like behind yeah, you. Yeah, complete the, the painting. Ceiling. And I can see maybe the table you're sitting at, and maybe I could see a little bit more of your body and then just the room. So the AI are like, this is one of our strongest features that, that we just released. So wow. just think about the use cases for that content creator that they always have this problem if they're doing like, let's say YouTube and TikTok, because mm -hmm. YouTube is like a horizontal aspect ratio and TikTok is vertical. So you always have to settle. You either shoot it like this and then you crop it like this or the other way around. Other way around. And right now you can always shoot it, let's say, at the 16 by 9 mm -hmm. and then kind of expand it if you do it right. So this is, I think, a very powerful feature that can also, for cinema, for, for commercials, for everyday creators, for content creators, for influencers, I think this is such a strong feature for anyone who's using video in some way. Yeah. And and the second feature, which is even more exciting, is Modify. Yeah. So Modify is basically you have a selection of any object, anything in the background. Let's say I want to add a poster on that wall. Mm -hmm. I can just make a selection, type poster, and it will add that to the video. And yeah. let's say I want to just color my streak. <laughs> In uh, red in, or something. red. Yeah. Let's say I want <laughs> the whole head to, my whole hair to be red. Mm -hmm. I can just select this area, say red hair, and it will... Not just change it, it will also composite it. So if I move it, it will move me, with me in a natural way. 
it, it will get the lighting that is currently being in, in the room, but the backlight, it will all, it will manifest it into that. And uh, this is such a strong tool and the possibilities I think are endless. And mm -hmm. because this is so new, we only now starting to see the use cases for it because you know how it is, you, like you make the technology and then you need the creative people to show you how it can be used. So we are, we're just starting to see the many use cases for this. And it's mind blowing. Every day we see something new and I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about this. You can do that and you can do that. Yeah. Uh, the main, one of the main problems in like AI that has been up until today is that you generated a video, right? And sometimes that clip that the system spit out, it's perfect, but it, one thing is wrong. Yeah. So what we would do is we go back and we fix our prompt, but there's always some kind of random to, to it. So you will yeah. get a totally different clip. And maybe you, you solve that one problem, but something else is messed up. Yeah. So for the first time ever, it, you can now edit those, you can iterate on top of an existing generation. And this gives you such an amazing amount of control of how you create videos. And this wasn't available up until now. Yeah. So this is, I think, one of our strongest features. And mm -hmm. it's just now being started, start to, to being used. So I think we will be seeing an amazing result with this, like in the next few days, weeks, Ooh, month, I'm, year. I'm so excited because I, even though full transparency, even though Canva released a lot of these like magic edits, but it's not video based. So it's not video based. Yeah, exactly. So I'm so excited to see like how you can incorporate new elements, like expand as well as change or edit to based on the video content. In fact, I was thinking like a lot, of, I'm privileged enough to live in a pretty big home. I have my dedicated studio. But I remember my producer, Herman, always says, Faye, clean your background, Just move the wire, move that fan away. So now, you know, every, we take so much time as creators to have to maintain a certain spot. And most of us, frankly, won't have a dedicated spot. Somebody are, is in their basement. Can you imagine using Pika to say, instead of spending 45 minutes cleaning up your space, you can leave everything as is. And in post-production, you can just make it look serene and clean. Uh, and you, it's just... you can change it to a palace if you want. You know, that, yeah. that's, that, that's the thing that, that you want to have. Perfect control of everything around you, every mm -hmm. object. So if you want your whole background to look like something else, you can do that. Yeah, so, I could be recording this in front of Disney World right now. Yeah. A little table and the Disney World behind me. I can do whatever I want. It's incredible. I think commercially, it's also very incredible. I see a lot of these commercials of the, the same woman doing chores. She's like multitasking. She's at work. She's with baby. She's, and they have to, in, in the old advertising world, you have to shoot that for weeks, millions of dollars to change the setting. And now it could just literally be having a green screen and everything else can be replaced. Yeah, that's, it's a, that's just another idea. I mean, we're just starting to discover like all those creative ideas that you can do with this. So it, it's very exciting to see where this will go and what will people do with this new ability that, that Pika has just put it out there. I can't wait to see what, where this will go. Yeah, no, this is super cool. I can't believe the time flies by so quickly. So I would... I'm looking at my list of questions. I feel like we talked a lot about them already, but what are some of the things like I haven't asked you wish to share with our audience and any ideas that you've had since the beginning of the conversation? I can maybe elaborate on the last thing you, that I said is I said that the, we make the technology and then we need the artist to show us what can be done with it. So right now is for me the most exciting, exciting time because we worked on this so hard for so long and just now releasing it, the most exciting part starts now. Just seeing all the artists, everyone in the AI art community, people who are exploring this for the first time and maybe have a fresh idea about this. People will now start to show us what can be done with this. Yeah. And this is the most exciting part for me, just to watch, follow the space, follow, following YouTube, following new creators. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of new creators every day and just follow that and see what people are doing. Cause it's always, oh, you can do that. I didn't even realize it. And even like this uh, front row and playing with it and, and testing it and trying this, mm -hmm. there's so much you can think about when you have your method of, think of thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So just think, just seeing what people do with this is so amazing. And I can't wait to see like what everyone will be doing with this. Oh, I'm so excited to hear that. Do you think Pika will consider working with influencers and creators at one point as well in 2024? I don't know yet. I don't have a really good answer for that. I hope I hope so, because I think it's natural, because this is a tool for everyone. Yeah. And I think it's natural. Yeah, I hope so. Sounds great. I so appreciate your time. And I know you are 
busier than ever before. I want to remind people to check out Pika Art, which is P-I-K-A dot A-R-T and sign up and definitely give it a test to run. Please let us know. Let me know in the comments below your experiments. I really would like to hear from this community as well. If you want to check out Matan's personal work, you could go to his website, which is matancohengroomy.com. And I've listed links in the description below. With that said, I am going to take us offline and welcome back to this show whenever you feel like it, Matan. I would love to just follow your work and I would love to see where Pika goes next. Oh, thank you so much. And yeah, please just check out Pika. And yeah, I think I will have you, whatever you do, you will have fun with it.